All right, we've seen what the ideal strokes and footwork look like. Now, let's experience what they feel like. Earlier, I said that there were two breakthroughs in the effortless program. The second breakthrough occurred, oddly enough, when I removed the racket from people's hands. I know that sounds funny, but what I found is that it's important first to feel and understand what our body's doing, how it's moving without the distraction of the racket. Then when we bring in the racket and eventually the ball, the movements feel much more natural. What we are doing is learning the component parts for the dance of tennis. Okay, everybody up. This is the participatory section. As you may have noticed, I'm left-handed. So right-handers will use mirror image here, and left-handers will have to move in the opposite direction. Let's begin by working on the forehand. The feet are going to be about shoulder width apart. And what I want you to do is sink into your knees and very loose and relaxed. You need relaxed shoulders to be a good tennis player. So from here, we're going to take the racket hand and we're going to put it right around waist level. And then the other hand is going to come up at chest level so that we can have it at the throat of the racket. This is the position we always return to. And the first thing we're going to do is begin by turning our shoulders. We saw in that other footage that the whole stroke begins right here. So I want you to do a few turns here. Feel what this feels like. Can you feel it twisting in your trunk here? Feel what that feels like right here. We turn. See, my hand starts right here at waist level. I go back, it's still there. And I can do a few with your eyes closed. Just feel it. You're here and you turn. Okay? So I said, this is the first move you're going to make for the rest of your life on this forehand. Never has to change. Right like this. Now, from here, we're going to make the turn and drop the forearm down. Okay? Feel what that feels like. Dropping the forearm down. Let's try a few with our eyes closed. Down and back up, down and back up. And you see, as it comes down, it starts coming forward. This is going to give us some of the power that we get in our shot. So we come down, and it's down and through. Let's try that again. Here, down, and come in. Feel that again. Up here, and it drops, and you come through. Now let's work on the step, because now this step is going to be the, the last step that we're always going to take when we come into the ball. We may have to take several steps to get to where the ball is, but this is the last step that we're going to take as often as possible. Can't always get in this position, but as often as we can, we want to be there. So we turn, and now feel this. We're going to push off. For me, it's my left foot. Right-handers is going to be the right foot. Push off. and. Step in. Feel that again. Turn, push, stepping across, and in to hit the ball. This is how we generate the power without having to muscle the shot. Turn, feel the weight here, and it transfers forward into the shot. Let's try two with the eyes closed. Feel it. Push. What's your body doing here to make this happen? One more with the eyes closed. Push and in. Okay, let's talk about the contact point. Because there's an ideal spot to hit each shot. And we want to try to get to that spot because the more we get to that spot, the more consistency we're going to have as we hit the ball. That spot is just in front of that front foot. Here every time. Not here one time, here one time, here one time. I'm going to try to get it at the same point every time. So we see the ball coming over there, and we time our swing so that right when the ball gets here, our racket's there. Let's just try a few strokes feeling coming through contact. You can even say it out loud. Let's do three more. Turn out loud, contact. Helps you with the timing. Two more. Contact. And one more. Turn and contact. All right, from here, let's work on the follow through. Because when we come here and all the way out, this is where we want to end the stroke. 
When I finish, my arm is completely extended and my hand is right here at eye level. This is the ideal finish point because we want to project the ball back over the net. And my arm is completely extended. You can feel it in these muscles here. Arm is stretched out. What that does is it helps take the ball back over the net. And also, the most important part that the net is only about three feet high, but a lot of balls go into the net. So we want to lift the ball. One of the most common misconceptions people have is that you're supposed to skim the ball over the net. We want the, net, the ball to go about three feet, three or four feet over the net on average. So we he we're here and we lift the ball up and extend out. Let's try a couple of those with our eyes closed. So we turn, drop, step, contact, and finish up here. Feel that stretch there. One more with the eyes closed. Turn, drop, step, contact, and reach out. OK, two more with the eyes open. Turn, drop, step, contact, all the way out. And one more. Turn, drop, step, contact, all the way out. And now we're going to do six of these strokes in super slow motion. Because when you do it extremely slowly like this, your body is actually able to learn more of what you want it to do. So here we go. We're in the ready position. We turn our shoulders you know, real slow. Forearm drops. We push off, step, contact, and extend right out in front. Number two, turn. Feel this shoulder. Brackets back. Forearm drops down. We step, contact, and finish right up here. Two more with the eyes closed. Turn. Drop, push off, step, contact, and right out in front. One more with the eyes closed. Turn. Feel what's happening here. Forearm drops. We push off, step, contact, extend out. Let's do two more with the eyes open. Turn, drop, step, contact, and right up here. And one more. Feel what's happening. Turn, drop, step, contact, and right on out. OK. Now let's move on to the backhand and work on that. On the backhand, we can actually work on learning what it feels like to change our grip without the racket in our hand. So you see here, this is the, how I'd be holding my racket if I had a forehand. As I make the backhand, I'm, as I start moving to the backhand, I'm going to shift this like this. This is how you change the grip. So you make this turn here, right like that. So you're starting here. And you turn the right hand like this. Just a very simple way, but it's an easy way to begin learning how to switch the grip, which you must do. So let's try a few of these. Just like the forehand, starting with the shoulder turn. Feel it. it's right here in the left shoulder for me, right shoulder for the right-handers. Feel that turn. Right? Nothing's happening. You're just turning your shoulders. You've done this a million times in your life. Let's try a few with the eyes closed. Turn. Feel that. It's that simple. Just turn the shoulders. See, my hand starts right here at waist level. When I come back, it's right there. It hasn't done anything. All I've done is turn my shoulders. Now from here, drop the forearms. Feel that. They just drop down. See, they're bent here, and they straighten out. If you're doing two hands, they're both together, and they drop. Here and drop. Let's try a few of these with the eyes closed. So we're here, the forearms drop. One more. Drop. Now when that happens, you see how the racket, the hand starts coming forward. That gives us the momentum. So we're here, it drops, 
we just come right on out. Let's try that again. We're here, drop, and come right on out. Now let's work on the footwork again. Same thing. On this side, we're taking the last step across and in. This foot is going to push off. We make the turn, we push, and step in like this. This is how we get the power without having to muscle the ball. Try that again. Turn, step, right in there. Turn, and push off and step. Let's try a couple of those with the eyes closed. Turn, feel that eyes are closed, you push off and in. One more time, eyes closed. Here, push and in. Okay, next is the contact point. On the forehand, the contact is just in front of the front foot. On the backhand for a one-handed player, that contact is about this far in front of the front foot, a foot or so. Right about there. Everybody has their own ideal spot, but right about there. It's not contacting here one time or here one time. It's seeing the ball and contacting it here every time. If you're doing two hands, see how the racket's going to be back here, much closer to the body, just a little bit, an inch or so, out in front of that front foot. All right, let's try a few of these strokes. Here, down, and out. Feel it. We turn, drop, step, contact, and out. A couple more. Turn, drop, step, contact. Let's try that again. Turn, drop, step, contact, and through. Let's do two more with the eyes closed. Feel it. Turn, drop, step, contact, and through. One more. Turn, drop, step, contact, and through. Okay, the last part of the stroke is the finish or the follow through. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn here, we're going to come all the way out. Now you see when I finish here, my arm is fully extended and my hand is right at eye level. This is the ideal place to finish. So we start here, turn, drop, step, contact, and finish right out here. Feel that. You can feel it in these muscles here. The arm is extended. We don't want to be in here. Feel it. On the backhand, when I finish, my arm's fully extended, my hand is at eye level, just like on the forehand, but my shoulders are perpendicular to the net here. I do not hit and come open like this. I come here, turn, drop, step, contact, and right out here like this. So finishing right here every time. Let's try two more with the eyes closed. So we turn, drop, step, contact, and finish right there. One more with the eyes closed. Turn, drop, step, contact, and finish right out in front. Now the finish for the two-handers is going to be a little different because as we have the other hand on the racket, we come here, we step, we contact. See our hands come up like this, so the shoulders do actually rotate open. Try that again for the two-handed players. Turn, drop, step, contact, and right out here. Uh, hands still end up at eye level. Now, let's do six of these strokes in super slow motion. So we start here. We turn from the ready position. Turn, feel the shoulder turn. Forearms drop. We push off. Step, contact, and right on out. Let's try that again. Turn, feel it slowly. Drop, step, contact, and finish right out in front. Two more with the eyes closed. Turn, forearms drop, push, step, contact, right on out. One more with the eyes closed. Feel the turn, and the forearms drop. We step, contact, and extend out. Let's do two more 
with the eyes open. Turn, drop, step, contact, and finish out in front. Let's do one more. Turn, drop, push off, step, contact, and extend out. Okay, let's do a few now where we're going to alternate back and forth. Let's begin by just turning our shoulders so we get a feeling of what that's like. So we start here and we turn. We switch to come over here. Feel what's happening there. Just our shoulders are turning and our hips. Our head is staying straight as we come here. And we can also work on the grip change here as we come over for the backhand. Feel the change that we just worked on. Back to the center. Over, back to the center, change the grip. Let's do two with the eyes closed. So we're here, back over, turn again, one more with the eyes closed, here, and back over, and two more. Just feeling that turn. This is a very important part of the stroke. Now let's do the full strokes alternating back and forth. So we turn and out. Turn and out and turn and out. Feel that shoulder. Turn and out. Four more. Turn and out. Turn and out. One more. Turn and out. Okay, now let's talk a little more in depth about the footwork. I said earlier that the footwork I was showing you then was the final step. And obviously, we can't always just use one step in getting to the ball. But what I've discovered is that as long as we get back to the middle of the court, we can get to the edge of the court by using just three steps. And so just like with the strokes, we want to program this footwork pattern into our subconscious so that under pressure, we're going to react with that same footwork. And how that works is that we turn, and then we're going to push off here just like before, and we go one, two, three, and step in there. Okay. Shuffle back to the middle. Let's try that again. Turn, push off, one, two, three. Back to the middle. Obviously, because we're inside here, we're going to have to take small steps. But the thing is that we're still patterning the right movement into our subconscious. Out on the court, we'll just take bigger steps. As often as we can, let's try this three steps. So one more time here. Turn and one, two, three. And then back to the center. Okay. Let's do that one more time. Turn and one, two, three. And back to the center. Okay. Now we're going to do the backhand. Feel it. We turn here. Now we're pushing off this foot and push. One, two, three three, and then shuffle back to the center, and again, turn, and one, two, three, and back to the center, again, turn, one, two, three, and back to the center, and one more time, turn, and one, two, three and back to the center. Now, very important piece of this is that after we hit the shot, as we're watching the ball and seeing where it's going and what we're going to be doing next, we have to shuffle back to the center. So watch as I come over here. One, two, three. I'm shuffling like this. And then when I come over here, same thing. One, two, three. I shuffle back. Until I know where the ball's going, I don't, don't want to cross over this way or this way. I want to shuffle like this, back and forth. I want you to try a few of those. We're just going to go back and forth for a minute here. You ready? Shuffle over, and then shuffle back, and all the way over here. Just feeling what this shuffle feels like, because it's not that natural a move for people to shuffle like this. Let's try it a little bit more. One more time, all the way over here, 
and back. Shuffle over and back to the center. All right, now we're going to do the three steps alternating back and forth. So we turn here and one, two, three, and shuffle back. And then turn and one, two, three, and shuffle back. And turn, one, two, three, and shuffle back. Turn, one, two, three, shuffle back. One more time each side. Turn, one, two, three, and shuffle back. And turn, one, two, three, and shuffle back to the middle. Probably the most important element of being a good tennis player is learning to track the ball. Seems like an easy enough thing to do, but what I've found is that most people do not really track the ball the whole way. Seems like you've been watching it the whole way. Ends up being that you only watch it till about two feet from your racket. So what we're going to do is, here again, in our living room, we can practice tracking the ball and learning how to do that. Make it part of our subconscious so we do it automatically when we're on the court. And the way that goes is we start here, we turn. We're just going to do one step with this for right now. Turn, and we, here we see the ball. It's coming over the net. We see it, we see it, we see it. We're watching it. And just at the last second, come down here, and our eyes are down on contact, at the contact point. Let's try that again. We turn. We see the ball. Here it comes, down, and last second. My eyes don't go down there till just before the ball gets there, because I'm tracking it in. Even though it's a blur, our minds are so amazing that it's actually still getting a reading, even though it's a blur to us on a conscious level. So feel that turn, seeing the ball, and last second, right down there. Really important to get this. Let's try some on the backhand. We turn, we're seeing the ball. Here it comes, down. Last second, our eyes are down here. Try that again. Turn, here comes the ball, down, last second, and our eyes stay down. It's very easy for our heads to want to pop up to see where the ball's going. If we can keep our eyes down a little bit longer, much greater chance of making the shot. Let's try one more backhand here. Turn, drop, eyes are over here, and down, last second. Now let's try the same thing using three steps. So we turn, our head stays straight, we go one, two, and last second down to see the ball. Then we shuffle back to the middle. Let's try that again. Turn, here we're seeing the ball, and down, last second, seeing the ball hit our strings. One more time here. Turn, we're tracking the ball, and down, last second. Shuffle back to the middle. Let's try it on the backhand. Tracking the ball, one, two, and last second. Right down, back to the middle. Try it again. Turn, one, two, and down at the last second. One more. Turn, one, two, and down at the last second. Let's go over for a forehand. We're going to alternate. Turn. One, two, and down at the last second. Shuffle back to the middle. Turn, and one, two, three. Eyes down. One more time here. Turn, seeing the ball, and there it is at contact. And one more time on the backhand. Turn, seeing the ball, and down at contact, and back to the middle. The last important element in becoming a good tennis player is learning how to breathe properly when you hit the ball. And what you want to do is you want to be exhaling every time you hit. Every time. You want to learn to pattern your breathing so that as you're swinging through and contacting the ball, you will be exhaling. Let's try a few of those on the forehand, see what that looks like. So we turn here, we're tracking the ball, and whew, you see how I did that? Use the image of feeling like you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Okay, you can't blow out the candles on a birthday cake by going, you have to 
and that also helps you relax. That's a big part of why you breathe. It's going to help you be more relaxed out on the court. So let's try that again on the forehand. Turn and just feel that. Exhale right at hitting. One more time. Turn and as you hit. Let's try it on the backhand side. So turn and try that again. Turn and one more time. Turn and all right. Let's try alternating to a few back and forth. Turn and and over here, turn and one more time. Turn and and over to the backhand. And now let's try it with three steps. So we turn and one, two, and shuffle back to the middle. And over here, turn and one, two, and back to the middle. And again. Turn and one, two, and back to the middle. Feel it. Turn, one, two, and back to the middle. Now let's combine the breathing and the tracking. So here we're going to, we're just going to start with one step to begin with. So we turn, tracking the ball, and the eyes come down at contact. Back to the center, over for a backhand. Turn, tracking the ball. Exhale at contact. Another forehand. Turn, tracking, and down at contact. And again, one more time. Turn, tracking it, and down at contact. Let's go to three steps now. Turn, one, two, okay, back to the middle, seeing the ball. Here we come. We see the ball, one, two, and eyes are down as we hit. Back to the middle, turn, seeing the ball, eyes are straight ahead, and last second as we exhale. Back to the middle, turn, and one, two, and, and one more time, forehand and backhand. Turn, and one, two, and one last one. We turn, we see it, and 